I'm going to spill the beans and share the dog training secrets to stop unwanted behaviors and train your dog super fast that dog trainers aren't gonna tell you for free. Now this first one is life saving, meaning if your dog ever gets off leash or they're running away from you, one tip you could try is running the opposite direction, make fun, exciting noises and stomping the ground and maybe waving your hands. Because a lot of times when you're chasing your dog and screaming and yelling at them to come back, they think it's a game. So sometimes running the opposite direction can help quickly revert their attention and then they wanna come after you. If your dog goes crazy, anytime you bring out the leash, treat pouch or their harness before they go for a walk, stop bringing those out every time you go for a walk. Instead, bring them out all the time. You notice I'm just filming a video right here. I don't have an intention to go on a walk with my dogs for hours and she has her, her harness on, the leash is out, the treat pouch is out. And this is because I want to desensitize these items so they don't always mean I'm going out for a walk. They could just mean, oh, I'm wearing this, no big deal. If you have a jumpy dog, they're jumping up on you or a barky dog indoors, hide or put a bunch of treat jars around your home. Now to preserve the freshness of the treats, pro tip, keep the treats in the original bag and put them inside of these. The fastest way dogs are going to learn in most cases is to reward them for choosing to do the right behavior. So for example, if your dog approaches you when you have some treats in your hand and they sit instead of jumping up, you better reward that right away. This is going to make you engaging with you and listening to you proactively more enticing, more exciting. This is going to make you the hero. Or if you have a dog that barks when people come into the house, we have a treat jar by the front door and to help make strangers and people coming in less scary, we have them give treats to the dog and that helps reduce a lot of that anxiety. Let's talk about going on a walk. Do not go outside of your home on a walk with a dog that struggles with pulling or barking on leash without giving them at least one brain game. One easy thing you can do is take a cardboard box, drop some of their food or treats in there, then put some toys on top of that, supervise this of course, and have your dog dig, sniff, and forage the treats out. This is going to mentally tire them. When we take our dogs on a walk and they have a lot of anticipatory excitement and energy around going on that walk, it's going to make them less likely to be successful. In my opinion, Every walk doesn't have to be a super structured walk. Sometimes I give my dogs leisurely sniff breaks during their walks. And what that means is I won't always ask them for a really strict heel. And you know what this does? This makes the outside world less exciting because what you're doing is you're desensitizing them to their environment and you're not making everything so restricted. A lot of times we go on our walks and we're trying to just get a certain number of steps in or miles in. Sometimes I like to give my dogs the opportunity to just go explore an adventure around on leash because then when I take them on a structured walk the next day or the next week, it's not as important to them. And definitely the most important thing to have that I never really hear anybody talk about is is easy and fast access to veterinarian help. This massive shortage in veterinarians and vet staff has made making an appointment with a vet, especially if there's an emergency, almost impossible. And unfortunately, I experienced this recently, which is why I'm very thankful that I have Vetster, which is an online telehealth vet medicine portal where you can get access to a veterinarian anytime, anywhere through your phone, through a free app. And big shout out to Vetster for sponsoring this part of the video. In fact, I reached out to them directly because I am such a huge fan. Unfortunately, well, kind of unfortunately, but I had to personally use their service for my cat Haven. When we called the emergency vet here, they said the average wait, even for emergencies, was five to eight hours. And that was typical in this area. And we're near San Francisco. And my cat seemed pretty stable. So I logged on to Vetster. I had never used it before, but I wanted to give it a shot. It was free to sign up. It gave me a list, a huge list of veterinarians. They were able to meet with me via phone. You can do chat or virtual video chat. And there were over 10 veterinarians available to meet with me via my phone, via video chat, right at my home. I didn't have to go anywhere within the next 30 minutes 
and they even had ratings and reviews. The vet that I spoke with was empathetic. She was caring. She answered all of my questions. I didn't feel rushed. Everything was answered right then and there. She gave me some tips and helpful steps of what to do to make sure my cat was healthy and my cat's great today. And this was months ago at this point. So I urge you, especially during holiday or busy season when vets are really busy and really backed up to download the app. It's free to download and give it a try, set up an account, get your pets loaded in there. And best of all, there is a special code for you linked in the description below to save on your very first appointment. Now, let's jump into what if your dog is afraid of something? Let's say they're afraid of the vacuum, they're afraid of the TV when a certain noise comes on, or they're afraid of a leash and harness like Marlo was and is. Remember, Marlo is my foster puppy. She came from a really tragic puppy mill situation and she had some trauma and really obvious probably abuse when it comes to a leash and so what do i do do i hide these do i coddle her no as you saw in this video this has been out and about this entire video i have her wearing a harness even though i don't have an intention to walk her now what if i could tell you that you could stop behaviors like chewing on furniture or things you don't want them to, counter surfing, barking out the front window every time a car drives by in one step in one day. You would be all over it, right? And the secret to this is prevention. That's why I'm always talking about proactive training, especially when it comes to puppy training, proactive puppy training. And what I mean by that is preventing and keeping our dogs from being able to practice the behavior that we don't want them to. And here's the biggest secret. Our dogs are gonna to continue to repeat behaviors that they get positive reinforcement from. But then you may say, yeah, but I'm yelling at them to stop and they should know that when I'm yelling, I'm angry. And that's just not how dogs interpret it. They're gonna take most times you're yelling at them as attention. So, wow, you're like cheering them on. So prevention is key by using baby gates, play pens, crates and if you're really eager to get your dog to focus on you more to not want to pull on leash anymore to listen better and to not be so hyperactive one of the fastest ways to really build that relationship between you and your dog is to work with them during meal time and maybe it's not every meal time because i know you're super busy but let's say you feed your dog twice a day or three times a day make a commitment to work with them just on basic cues, basic commands, like look at me, the touch cue, sits, downs, the place cue, all that will be linked down below. You can check after this video and use their food as the reward. It really develops and strengthens the bond between you two because working with our dogs is one of the best ways to do that. It builds their confidence. And then when it comes to punishing our dogs, my strong, very strong opinion on how we discipline our or punish punish our dog or puppy is we don't. And the reason for that is when we scream or yell at our dogs, they're not interpreting that, like I said before, as, oh, I did something wrong. But really what most dogs interpret that as is attention. And if you found this helpful, definitely click that subscribe button as I'm going to be sharing more of these and comment below if I should share a part two of this of like really simple solutions for your pets. And you can also find daily tips from me on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, LinkedIn, um, at my name, Rachel Fasaro. Now I wanna talk more about my favorite foods for dogs. You can click the video right here, or if you wanna see more about my favorite enrichment and brain game puzzle toys, click the video right here. And I hope you have a beautiful day, goodbye.